National Focal Points uh, Network meeting. Sylvain has relinquished his emceeing responsibilities. Um, has he'll be speaking in the closing, um, but don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to get up and and do uh, to spell cow with your hips. Um, there was a mystery QR code uh, up on the screen, and um, we can get that back up. Um, this is um, just to kind of invite you to uh, take note of this. Uh, so you can pro provide feedback uh, for OHRLS um, if, uh, in terms of the, the, the meeting. Um, our closing is going to be really in two parts. Um, we'll, we'll have the moderators from each of the four sessions um, really present some key takeaways um, from their respective sessions. Um, and, and I want to just ask them to be uh, succinct as, as best as they can. Uh, focus on the key takeaways, some sound bites from your respective sessions. Um, we will have a, a fuller, more comprehensive summary of the meeting. Um, and then we'll close uh, the meeting with uh, remarks from uh, OHRLS and one want to. Uh, so as you know, uh, I think you've gotten to know our moderators over the last two days. Um, session one, uh, setting the scene and unpacking the Abbas, was moderated by Ms. Andy fong Toy head of the UN SCAP sub-regional office uh, for the Pacific. In session two, uh, which looked at reporting, monitoring, and evaluation of the ABAS, as well as collaboration with the UN system, uh, was moderated by Ms. Juliet Hakwa, head of the monitoring and evaluation unit uh, at the office of the Prime Minister of Vanuatu. And then a uh, big thanks again to Andy. Uh, she came back uh, to moderate session three which was an in-depth uh, discussion uh, that went into um, uh, ABBA's focus areas. Uh, and then finally, session four on uh, strengthening NFP partnerships um, that just concluded was moderated by Mr. Ken Roy Roach, head of the UN Resident Coordinator's Office for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. So in that order, um, I'd like to invite our moderators uh, to, to take the floor. Okay, thank you very much, Damien. Um, so when we started yesterday, which seems actually almost sort of trying to remember what we did yesterday, <laughs> I think, because we've had such a, a full two days. Um, as Damien said, I moderated session one, and session one had two segments. Uh, and in the first part, uh, we discussed the coherent implementation of ABAS uh, across global processes. And it was emphasized that national focal points are essential for driving the localization of ABAS at the national level. The key components of ABIS were outlined during that session, uh, including the unique experiences of SIDS rooted in previous programs of actions, uh, the aspirations of SIDS in four key areas of sustainable development, and the 10 action clusters focusing on tangible actions. We also discussed partnerships and outcomes. The role of the UN, international financial institutions, and civil society in supporting ABIS were also highlighted alongside uh, the monitoring and evaluation framework for tracking progress. The importance of timely partnerships was underscored uh, with national focal points encouraged to integrate ABIS into national development strategies, ensuring effective monitoring and reporting. Economic challenges were addressed, particularly the high percentage of SIDS in debt distress and the need for initiatives like the Debt Sustainability Support Initiative to enhance economic resilience. The session also emphasized the importance of sid sids cooperation to tackle shared challenges and foster resilience. The integration of ABIS with international frameworks such as the Paris Agreement, the Sendai Framework and Agenda uh, 2030 was discussed with a focus on economic resilience, climate action, youth empowerment and disaster risk reduction. Participants highlighted the need to leverage existing regional protocols to avoid duplication and donor partners expressed interest in better understanding SIDS constraints and identifying areas for intervention. With regard to segment two, uh, the session featured a presentation on the localization of ABBAS, drawing lessons from the, from the Samoa pathway. Key lessons included the importance of international and regional partnerships, climate resilience, blue economy integration, sustainable energy promotion and inclusive governance. The discussion then moved to enabling factors for ABIS implementation, which include an international concessional financial support, technology transfer and stronger regional cooperation. 
particularly in marine conservation and disaster management. At the national level, the session focused on strengthening institutions, enhancing climate policies, and building capacity in the blue and green economies. Challenges to ABIS localization were noted, including limited financial resources, capacity gaps, fragmented policy implementation, and cultural challenges. The session emphasized the importance of international and regional support, strong local institutions, public awareness, and local innovation for successful implementation. This is, the session concluded with a presentation on integrating ABIS into national development strategies, highlighting lessons learned from the Samoa pathway, including the need for a clear implementation framework, dedicated funding, and greater stakeholder awareness. Discussions reinforced the importance of youth involvement in promoting ABIS, and a proposal was made to establish a committee to track resource allocation and developments among SIDS. Thank you, uh, Andy. Um, and we'll go now straight to uh, Juliet for session uh, two. Thank you. Um, ironically, I'm supposed to be giving feedback on the reporting and MEL section, and I did not take detailed notes. So please excuse me. I will just um, go along with what I have all over the place here, but also um, we'll wait for the official handout to come out. So the session um, took place yesterday afternoon, and we had two parts to the session. The first part was a bit of an overview, and we had um, we had Tishka who talked to us uh, with Anya. They did a combined presentation where they kind of took us through um, what has happened, where we are, um, the fruition of the IATF, and um, sort of an outline of what they kind of can expect to do. They also shared with us a very uh, detailed timeline of where they are and what sort of the main milestone activities to reach before the deadline, which I believe is next um, July sorry, June 2025, thank you. Um, and then we also had a presentation from um, Kenneta, who also talked a little bit about some of the um, activities that have gone through just with the processes in the lead up to the IATF. And then we also had an intervention from Mr. Chris Ryan, who's with UNSCAP online. And he spoke a little bit more about the data capabilities and what we'd actually discussed in the lead up um, to this forum today. And he also talked a little bit about the possibility of um, different methods of how we could actually develop the ME framework, how we could decide on indicators and how we wanted to do that. And there was also a brief discussion on the possibility of putting together a set of core indicators um, at the highest level that all the SIDS countries could actually um, develop other maybe sub-regional um, indicators from that. And that's something that will probably be discussed further in uh, future forums. The session uh, from 4 to 5 p.m. was um, an opportunity for NPFs to take the floor and they were able to share some of the uh, lessons learned, some of their practices that they, and observations that they've made through their process with m &E practices, but also in how their experiences with SIDS so far. So we had um, two speakers at that time and they spoke um, about many issues, but I'm just gonna highlight some of the ones that I have down here. Um, they spoke a lot about the alignment process and just the need for SIDS countries to ensure that we're able to translate global frameworks such as a SIDS into, um, so that there is alignment with our policies and plans in country. Um, there was also a discussion around data availability and capacity and also seeking support, but also determining what kind of support um, we'd like to see from the RCOs and also um, the UN system, but also crop agencies and the sub-regions and the commissions as well. Um, we also discussed elements of m and &E from uh, NPF country experiences and what that could look like if we translate that into an m and &E framework for SIDS. And we also had the opportunity to um, talk a little bit about some of the best practices and knowledge sharing um, from around different um, country perspectives as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, you'll recall that when we uh, did session three, uh, that it was an in-depth 
uh, discussion on the ABIS focus areas, but particularly uh, we discussed the Center of Excellence, BBNJ, digitalization and shared perspectives in VNR preparation and broadly how to implement uh, ABIS. With regard to the DSS and the Center of Excellence, um, we recalled that the Center of Excellence is the hub for data innovation and investment, constituting three components. Uh, this is Global Data Hub, the Technology and Innovation Mechanism, and the Ireland Investment Forum. And that the DSSS will provide debt management assistance and solutions for long-term sustainability, and it will offer technical expertise in loss and damage assessments. Uh, and also financial planning and climate finance mobilization, and that it will serve as a model for SIDS to pursue sustainable uh, debt management. It was underscored uh, that SIDS uh, do not support non-reactive uh, fixes, but, uh, but basically supported more comprehensive support through creating a fiscal space, future protection measures, resilient investment, and expert advisory and legal support. And uh, national focal points were in, encouraged to engage with the DSSS, uh, the Center of Excellence, to leverage, data, leverage the data hub and collaborate to promote inclusive approaches and prioritize regional partnerships to share experiences. With regard to the discussion on oceans and BBNJ, uh, we of course are all aware of the importance of oceans for SIDS uh, with the rich marine biodiversity which is fundamental to our livelihoods, culture, and identity. And, and of course, we are the stewards of the ocean, managing 19.1% of the world's EEZs. The drive to promote sustainable blue economies, uh, digital transformation, and advancing uh, the BBNJ agreement was emphasized. And in particular, um, Bridge underscored the importance of ratifying the BBNJ uh, with SIDS. Currently, uh, there's 10 ratifications, 18 signatures, and 11 was no action. Uh, Bridge also highlighted the initiative of unlocking the Blue Pacific prosperity. We then moved on to a, a discussion on digitalization uh, and the session underscored the importance of digitalization and adoption of digital technologies in a digital, digital world and the reference in ABIS to the importance of digitalization. We acknowledge that the opportunities for digital transformation abound uh, with potential dividends in economic diversification, e-government service, climate resilience, uh, with digital tools in particular, able to enhance disaster preparedness and in global partnerships. However, um, the key challenges for SIDS in digitalization remain, in particular, inadequate digital infrastructure and affordability. And we were shown uh, the stats uh, in terms of the, both the uh, coverage, but also the cost uh, in SIDS of digitalization, and also the skills gap and our fragmented policy actions. So it was acknowledged that robust and reliable connectivity is a precondition for digital transformation, and that this requires improvements uh, in our ITC infrastructure, uh, not only for the submarine cables, but also in some cases, the importance of satellite and microwave infrastructure for inaccessible islands. Uh, there was a plea for technical assistance training, improving digital literacy, building digital trust, uh, and promoting digital initiatives. And of course, partnerships remain critical to advancing digitalizations in SIDS. With regard to the VNR process, um, there was a suggestion that there should be dedicated specific VNR chapters uh, for SIDS. Uh, highlighting the lessons from the Sam Samoa pathway and addressing institutional and capacity gaps. Uh, and that the VNR process uh, could be used as a vehicle for funding opportunities, stakeholder coordination and evidence-based reporting. Uh, there was a call for the UN system to provide support through technical assistance, capacity building and sharing best practices, and an acknowledgement that other stakeholders such as civil society, the private sector, and academia can play a vital role in advocacy and implementation and enhancing the process through the unique strengths. Uh, also an acknowledgement uh, of the reach uh, of civil society's advocacy uh, and the contributions of academia to, the, to enriching the VNR process. And so basically that great engagement and communication uh, will strengthen uh, VNRs. There was a recommendation for effective integration to include enhancing capacity building fostering early engagement in governments in the UN and improving public awareness of the ABIS agenda. Additionally, uh, establishing such a forum such as localized SIDS 
National Business Network Forum can further facilitate stakeholder involvement and promote ABIS alongside the SDGs. There was also an acknowledgement about aligning national reporting to sub-regional and international platforms and partnerships with regional commissions and RCOs being important. There was a suggestion for a possible stock, stock take on what SIDS capabilities are for reporting on SIDS and that this could be taken on as part of the IATF scope. There was also emphasis on investing in national systems uh, which are built by and with the people and the capabilities and the resource context. Uh, in short, uh, you know, basically what we're saying was don't reinvent the wheel uh, and take into account the unique cultures in mind. And finally, in terms of ABIS implementation, it was noted that ABIS implementation requires policy integration and, and alignment, uh, including SDGs with SIDS specific priorities outlined in ABIS. Uh, it requires institutional coordination and capacity building. Uh, it requires uh, planning from planning to action, uh, in particular pinpointing specific opportunities to implement ABIS within the planning stages and transition to actual strategies. Of course, we require financing, uh, in particular integrated national financial frameworks and development finance assessments, data monitoring uh, and reporting, enhancing data systems to facilitate ABIS monitoring and including it in voluntary national review reporting, advocacy and partnership to rally all actors, multi-stakeholder engagement, and again, regional and global partnerships that augment rather than duplicate efforts. Thank you. Uh, well, my the session four, I think was the last session. So it's the one that is most fresh in your minds. So hopefully I don't have to go through too much of what we just discussed, but um, suffice to say, I think the session, um, we had a very good panel uh, of speakers and um, most of the speakers, I think I want to start with the first, first two speakers um, in the case of the UK, a reiteration of UK's commitment to SIDS, um, uh, a representation of how the UK has been working in SIDS issues, for example, uh, supporting the reform of the DAC rules, which is important, uh, development assistance community, but also um, being a, an advocate for SIDS in terms of uh, working and access to climate financing and providing the technical capacities that countries need to, to access the climate financing by embedding, uh, embedding advisors uh, in a number of countries um, around the world, among other things, in terms of the UK's engagement with the SIDS. And then we we spoke, um, we, we heard a presentation from uh, our colleague from Malta, who, who made a point that Malta, uh, because of some of the similarities in terms of its own development um, trajectory, and now being a member of the EU serves as an important voice um, for small states um, that uh, there is an opportunity to really leverage the capacities of institutions, including centers of excellence in Malta and other countries to support and accompany SIDS on the journey in terms of the implementation of the ABAS and that there and that there are opportunities around linking those capacities up um, in terms of partnerships to support SIDS in achieving uh, the ABAS. And then we, we, we spoke, uh, we heard a very good presentation on, on public-private partnerships, and in particular, private sector, and the role the private sector has been playing um, with some good examples of how, through digitalization, the private sector has been enabling various um, initiatives in um, whether it's uh, in at the community level uh, through access to visa technology or um, providing energy um, to power VSAT or even supporting in some cases the creation of an early warning system um, and also how the private sector has been using itself and playing a catalytic role to enable um, partnerships with civil society, for example, and bio biodiversity uh, carbon credits. Then we we spoke a bit about the opportunities around um, partnerships with civil society again, uh, civil society organizations, the fact that there is um, that uh, an existing roadmap um, which was um, launched 
at the SITS conference in Antigua, uh, the CSO roadmap for APAS implementation, and the um, fact that there are a number of opportunities that have been presented in that roadmap for further strengthening how civil society can support the implementation of the ABAS and the need to align the ABAS ME plan with the roadmap for the CSO um, uh, with the CSO strategy that was created at the ABAS. And then we talked a little bit and we had the perspective from the national focal points. And one of those perspectives is the importance of building capacity of national focal points to support the identification of the appropriate partnerships. And we also heard of the experience of um, Vanuatu, for example, in terms of how they brought the cultural context to the definition of partnerships uh, and the role in, and, and work done around um, CSO mapping and linking the work of the CSOs with the various pillars of the government policy and the SDG response. So a very practical example of how CSOs can work with national authorities and nationals um, with the government to respond to specific needs. And then uh, finally, uh, we discuss a bit of the Global Business Network Forum from the OHR LLS. And then one of the important recommendations, which is to look at the local level to see how to strengthen and create um, stronger business investment, business participation in the implementation of the ABAS, but also beyond private sector, looking at opportunities for creating and bringing other sectors on board through stronger multi-stakeholder partnerships um, at the national level. We ended with a very good discussion on the importance of uh, working to create checks and balances um, as you develop these partnerships and also with, with private sector in particular. And then um, I, highlighting the importance of really looking for opportunities to strengthen SID SIDS partnerships and, and using the National Focal Points Network as an opportunity for identifying effective practices from SIDS that could be adopted by other SIDS um, to, to support the implementation um, of the ABAS. So I think I'll leave it there in the interest of time, but um, that's a, a quick summary of our discussions. Uh, thank you so much to our distinguished moderators. Uh, please join me in a round of applause uh, for them. Thank you. Uh, so we'll move now uh, to closing remarks, and I would like to uh, invite Ms. Tishka Francis, head of the SID sub-program at UNOHRLLS, uh, and also Mr. Sylvain Kalsikow, uh, head of the UN division at the Department of Foreign Affairs and International, International Cooperation of Vanuatu for their closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Damien. Um, excellencies, national focal points, colleagues, I wish really to thank you all for your very substantive and productive contributions, including um, those very dedicated participants who joined us online, which I believe made the fifth meeting of the SIDS National Focal Points Network truly a success. I hope that the NFPs can leave here now as newly minted champions for the ABAS at the national level, at the very least. I also wish to thank all of the moderators um, of the sessions for their very useful summaries of our deliberations. But I just wanted to add a few points uh, to take away from our work together. It was apparent here that the integrated approach to monitoring and reporting is necessary to drive the implementation of ABAS and other global frameworks. And we definitely take note of the excellent feedback provided on in Taylor, the need to make use of existing mechanisms and platforms as much as possible. I think that came out very clearly in our discussions and we will definitely take that forward. We also take note of the feedback on the work to develop the m &A framework, which, will be, which we will bring into the work of the IATF. In this context, OHRLLS will also provide more information on the development of the NFP toolkit for the implementation of the ABAS, which will be done alongside the work of the IATF. We also had the opportunity to develop 
delve deeper into challenges faces SIDS around the key issues of debt, digitalization, oceans and climate, and other priority areas for sustainable development. And these discussions will hopefully inform a more obvious focus approach to BNR preparations, as well as a general mainstreaming of ABAS into SDG implementation. Uh, we look forward to supporting you in these efforts and to take the key messages forward to upcoming meetings like the COP later this year, as well as the UN Oceans Conference and FFD4 next year. So colleagues, as you know, national focal point the national focal point mechanism provides a much needed opportunity for the SIDS to share information on the implementation of the ABAS. And this meeting also provided the opportunity to hear from our partners and other stakeholders, including the CSOs and the private sector in support of implementation, uh, particularly at the national level. And I think we at OHRLS believe this is a very important to take forward um, in the context of um, the network. And we will look at ways of strengthening our engagement strategy going forward, given our discussions over the next over the last two days, particularly around the thematic work streams that we discussed, capacity building efforts, and of course, re resource mobilization. Finally, as was mentioned, we will provide a summary report at the meeting in due course, and all presentations will be uploaded to the OHRLLS website, and the re relevant links will be forwarded. Um, we hope um, the NFPs and all participants can take back the important messages shared here to their respective ministries, organizations, businesses, and other entities. And I, I believe we already um, put on the screen um, a, a link to the um, evaluation form, but we will also share that electronically. Um, and we would request that you please fill that in and return it to us as soon as possible. Um, this will be an important tool for us um, to get your ideas on how to improve the effectiveness of these meetings and our work more broadly. So as I conclude, I, on behalf of the OHRLS team, including the USG and High Representative who couldn't be here with us today, I wish to thank you all so very much again for the useful discussions and for your active participation. I would also like to thank the technical staff um, who have so ably supported our meetings. And last but not least, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the government and people of Vanuatu for so graciously hosting us. A special thanks goes to my friend Sylvain and Juliet. I met Juliet just at this trip, but I think we became fast friends. So thank you so much to you and your teams for your tireless efforts um, to make this meeting a success. Um, it is truly appreciated. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Jessica, uh, for those um, very kind words. Believe it or not, we are going to conclude this meeting three minutes 52 seconds before the scheduled time. <laughs> We're advancing here. Yeah. Um, excellencies, NFPs, uh, distinguished participants, on behalf of the Vanuatu government, it has been our absolute pleasure hosting the fifth SIDS National Focal Points Net Network meeting. We again wish to thank the OHRLLS team led by my dear friend Tishka Francis for putting together the meeting program and for their stellar efforts in bringing you all here. Uh, we thank all of you NFPs, uh, experts, representatives from uh, diplomatic missions, UN offices, agencies, funds and programs, MCOs, civil societies and NGOs, private sector, and of course, government officials for attending uh, the meeting and adding to the rich discussions. We are pleased with the way discussions uh, went despite the technical glitches we experienced in the beginning. So please forgive us if we um, fell short of your expectations. As our honorable DPM mentioned, um, we hope that you will uh, return to your respective homes, um, empowered and invigorated to help guide national uh, implementation of ABAS through practicable, um, 
practicable and tangible actions using your own development processes and through a holistic approach. For those whose um, journeys end here, we wish you safe travels uh, back to your respective homes. For those continuing uh, on with the side visit and the Blue Lagoon uh, swim, we will see you tomorrow. Despite the weather, we will go. Um, for those, um, I wish to uh, thank uh, uh, the preparations committee here and on the ground, chaired by my very able uh, good friend, Ms. Juliet Hakwa, for the tireless efforts with the logistics. I truly have a great team and I appreciate them so much. I also want to thank the technical team led by the Brech uh, Pacific for uh, um, guiding us through this and enabling our uh, colleagues who are not able to be here to join us in this meeting. Now, on behalf of the Vanuatu government and OHR LLS, my friend Tishka and I have now jointly declare the official part of the fifth meeting of the SIDS National Focal Point closed. Thank you.